Uh, let's play this clip from uh, from uh, the uh, Bad Faith podcast. Um, and I, I, I'm going to concede. I haven't seen the whole podcast. They released this little clip, and it occurred to me, like, you know, they're talking about impeachment. And um, here is um, uh, Bree Joy Gray makes the point, which I think is a good point, that at least in part, I mean, I think a big part of the impeachment, the reason why it was so easy and the reason why they got 10 Republicans um, was because a lot of these people are terrified and they're quite aware of the the chances that there may have been essentially accomplices in their own uh, Congress. And I think they were terrified. Um, remember, in the first day or two, Nancy Pelosi did not want impeachment. No. It, I mean, did not. And they were members of the caucus like uh, the Oregon representative who were saying, oh, this is too divisive. Like, Absolutely. It, it, Absolutely. It was just the result of the trauma of the members that experienced it and outside leftist pressure that was like, no, 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 this was horrific and we cannot let this go. Right. So the, just keep that in mind. That's a reality. Uh, Bree makes the uh, point here that, um, that they're... Part of the reason, at least, I think part of the reason, maybe she thinks it's the whole reason, is to also, she says, stigmatize the Republican Party. And and I would say, yes, you want to brand the Republican Party. You, I want the Republicans to pay a price for, well, frankly, I will want them to pay a price for everything I've witnessed over the past 25 years. But, well, 30, 40 years. But in this instance, in terms of what is politically viable, you want them to pay a price for their association with Donald Trump. You want them to pay a, a, and, and leverage it. If there's 10 Republicans who are going to vote against Donald Trump, that means that there is another cohort of Republicans who are going to pay a political price for voting with Donald Trump. You on drive the a wedge. So you drive a wedge. Exactly. And so she says this. And then uh, Greenwald, and again, this is a guy who I've had respect for in the past, um, 100% says something that is really akin to what like, you know, a Dave Rubin point would be. I read something somewhere that is completely irrelevant to what the Democratic elected officials do. However, it's indicative of, of a certain amount of grievance that I'm going to say is, is I'm going to project onto these people. It's bizarre. Part of the reaction, the desire to call it a coup, the desire to use words like insurrection, the desire to impeach Trump at this stage is because Democrats want to make sure this has a long term political cost, not just a kind of like legal cost or to use this in a shock, do shock doctrine moment to expand surveillance state or what have you. But to say we want this to stick, we want to stigmatize Republicans with this for the long term. First of all, I'm not entirely sure that the motive of all Democrats or most Democrats is, is what you said. I think that's probably the motive of some. I think part of the motive here is. is part, but yes. OK, now that is uh, who knows? I don't think there is a monolithic. Now, I don't even know what they're talking about with Democrats. I mean, presumably, right, like the people who are impeaching. Are the Democratic lawmakers. They're the ones who are actually impeaching. So maybe we're talking about Democratic lawmakers I think so. here. I mean, I have zero problem with anything that was just said there. Oh, absolutely. I, yeah. In fact, I would say that should be pretty close to number one reason for uh, for instigating and and close to exclusive reason. I mean, I think you want to obviously say, like, hey, we want to discourage this type of behavior. Right. Uh, and anybody who in any way encourages it, we don't want future presidents to use the threat of physical force against lawmakers to uh, to, to to influence our, our lawmaking or choosing of the president in this instance. Like, that shouldn't happen. But then after that, it should be, we're, we're going to, to exact a, a political cost. No, sorry, right. but just to, to frame it correctly. Election. not it's, it's not We're not choosing a president to overthrow the results of an election where someone won handily. Exactly. Okay. I understated yeah. it. You're right. Yeah, no, it's um, okay. But, uh, and, and then to say like, but I don't know if that's monolithic. Yeah, okay. But what? Go back just a little bit. I, I couldn't believe that he went in this direction with this. Democrats or most Democrats is, is what you said. I think that's probably the motive of some. I think part of the motive here is, is, is to humiliate, to kind of vindicate their view that they've been saying all along 
that this is a totally illegitimate um, and tyrannical, despotic, threatening administration, the likes of which we've never seen before on a different plane than the evil of George Bush and Dick Cheney. And to, one second. to finally get what... One second. I don't think anyone's... Well, wait a second. He is saying that the reason why they want to impeach is because the implication is that despite the fact that I think, and maybe he disagrees, that Donald Trump fomented enough anger that you had people go in and bludgeon a cop to death with a fire extinguisher in the process of trampling through and building gallows. It's as if that's not real and that the Democrats somehow manipulated them to do that and that reacting to that in a way which is, you know, at least not controversial enough that you got 10 more Republicans to join on board. That is because it's all cosplay to pretend that Donald Trump is that bad. Now, I happen to think. I mean, I think that's imp- that could be interpreted as what he's saying. I don't think he explicitly says that that's the exact reasoning. Well, there. no, I mean, he does, because for him to say that this is vindicating their claims. No, no, the, no. the, the false. The false premise that he's the straw man he's standing up there is the the claim that he's claiming that Democrats are making the claim that he is way worse than Dick Cheney and George W. Bush. I don't think that's the strategic claim of the Democratic Party. Oh, no. So that's that's where I have the issue. That's such an online specific argument to things he's concerned about with his work, which is the national security state and the wars. But before we even get to that. Right. To say that they're doing this to vindicate their claim that he's tyrannical and despotic and whatnot is to imply that the actions he took are somehow less than, I mean, look, tyrannical, despotic, whatever, you know. That's another straw man issue. These these are slightly, you know, whatever. Exaggeration. But I, I don't know what you call a guy who is quite consciously sending his supporters to crash into the Capitol uh, and um, violently threaten people who are ostensibly going to just validate the election results. I mean, I don't know what you call that. Maybe the issue is you shouldn't call him despotic. You should just call him rude or you shouldn't call him tyrannical. You should just call him like, you know, super aggressive whatever it's semantical but the semantic implication arguments. is yeah, right. is that democrats need to gin this up to justify themselves look they don't need to gin this up to justify it like the idea that that nancy pelosi is like how are we going to justify all the things we've said about donald trump joe biden's president they're moving on to the next thing that's why they didn't want to impeach that's, That's why, why they Biden don't want publicly to said exactly. that he doesn't want impeachment because he wants to focus on his and who, agenda, whatever. Who talked about Donald be. Trump as being uniquely horrible more than Joe Biden? And and so, you know, maybe there's some commentator somewhere who did. Now, well, no, I this agree. is a reaction to the media hyperventilating about Donald Trump, which is Glenn's perception that they went so hard about Donald Trump and that they, they don't do that about other Republicans and Democrats and other figures. And I am incredibly sympathetic to that position because it's my position. I agree that they went way too hard in like the uniting behind uh, let's go after Trump. I think Trump's a unique evil in, in, in his own right. I think George W. Bush's administration was a unique evil in their own right. I get that resentment. I want them to hold the powerful accountable too, but that doesn't apply well, here. Here's the thing. You, I mean, you hit the nail on the head because that may be, there may have been members of the media who did that. But guess what? They don't vote on impeachment. Right. But here, this whole thing of like conflating on one hand, and we see right wingers do this all the time. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe uh, Jim Jordan is up there or maybe Ted Cruz is up there or, you know, telling people to get involved in armed insurrection. Dan Crenshaw is doing this, like literally making like action figure movies uh, that are like, you know, yeah. where he's like, you know. But uh, Demi Lovato out. was rude. Exactly. Right. But some celebrity, <laughs> yeah. you know, the woman who played Grace and Willie Grace was a real dick to me on Twitter. Like, <laughs> yeah, wait, yeah. what? Nah. But continue, because that's exactly the argument he makes. He doesn't go and cite 
uh, Nancy Pelosi saying, you know, something. He cites somebody. Uh, Another frankly, elite institution is somehow uh, a blob that's uh, engulfed by these other elite institutions. It's just play, one big thing. Play, right. Continue yeah. on with the clip. And tyrannical, despotic, threatening administration, the likes of which we've never seen before on a different plane than the evil of George Bush and Dick Cheney and to, hmm. to finally get what they've wanted for so long, impeaching him, removing him from office, even with three days left, is kind of like a satisfaction of that thirst for vengeance and to humiliate his movement. This is an article in The Atlantic, kind of the pinnacle of liberal smugness by Caitlin Flanagan. And this is in her first paragraph how she describes the people who went to this uh, Capitol event, she said, here they were, a coalition of the willing, deadbeat dads, you porn enthusiasts, slow students, and MMA fans. They had heard the rebel yell, packed up their Confederate flags and Trump banners, and GPS their way to Washington. After a few wrong turns, they pulled into the swamp with bellies full of beer and sausage McMuffins, maybe a little high on Adderall, ready to get it done. I think that a lot of what's going on is that these people know that they are scorned and looked down upon by the ruling class elite, especially the one that's about to really take over in a way that's almost unchallengeable. And the more you humiliate them and make them feel powerless, the more you take away from them their ability to organize and express that rage, it's going to find an outlet in more destructive ways. And that is, I think, something that I think is really worth worrying about. So that's that exact conflation. I hadn't even seen that clip right. yet. Yes. Right. No, okay. that is the conflation right. there. On top of which. And but just, we should say, though, quickly, that is a hor- horrible paragraph by that Atlantic writer. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know who she is. I, 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 you know, it's quite possible that maybe she is the one who dictates what uh, Nancy Pelosi does. Um, and, the, and he's right to have that visceral reaction and say there is a liberal yeah, smugness it's like attached a, to Trump. Right. But of course, this is also sort of the same crap of crap that like Maureen Dowd would write about, you know, Al Gore or whatnot. I mean, like this is a style of writing that is, I think, sort of like divorced from a uh, from what actual politics are again it is it is a cultural he is making a a cultural complaint about people who let's be clear these are not these are not necessarily working class people who have the time and the money to go and take this time to go and do this i mean they may not have you know uh, the this writer from the atlantic uh you know may uh you know inappropriately take issue with people eating egg McMuffins or whatnot. But I mean, the fact of the matter is- it's obnoxious. It's obnoxious. Totally obnoxious, but completely divorced from the idea that, uh, that impeaching Donald Trump is an attempt to seek vengeance against these, these ilk of people. Like, frankly, those people who went into the, uh, the Capitol building- That's not those people. I would not say you should get revenge, but you should. Yes, these people should all be punished. And yes, some of them had Confederate flags. And yes, some of them were wasted. And yes, some of them, you know, uh, all, all, all of those things. But the bottom line is like to conflate all these things is really the, the functional equivalent of like some liberals were mean to me online. Therefore, I no longer support, you know, uh, single payer health care coverage. I mean, it's just a bizarre critique to substantiate the claim that the Democrats are impeaching Donald Trump to seek revenge and humiliate a narrow set of Trump voters because recall that, and we've certainly criticized them, uh, Democrats were certainly looking to get other Trump voters to vote for them. (laughs) And we're certainly looking to appease them in the course of the campaign, right? I mean, so the idea that they are looking for a specific set of Trump voters that they're going to punish by impeaching Donald Trump is bizarre to make that claim to someone with Glenn's clear uh, intelligence. So that's the thing is, I will, and maybe this bothers some people on the left, I will always respect Glenn, for the most part, based on the work he has done. I mean, not for the most part. I will respect Glenn because of the work and the bravery that it took. And I genuinely think he's really bright and brilliant and and has the capacity for awesome uh, analysis and and understanding. But this is a result of, of being too online. Like, this is not connected to politics. This is connected to online cultures that 
group media and liberal elites with liberal politicians in a way that doesn't make sense and doesn't fit into puzzle pieces. And it's a hatred of the elites in the American government and the elites in media. That's that's where the analysis begins. And then it's branched out from there. So I, I mean, I, I, who, I, who knows what drives it? I, I mean, no, I, but I, that's, I'm not saying that's what drives him. I'm saying that that's what it appears to be. That's where the origins of this argument appear to be. And, and, and like there are a lot of people on the left where that's how the analysis starts, as opposed to like, let's look at the individual actions of these lawmakers and then make decisions from there and make it's, it. And, it's and not a political it analysis. It's not. I mean, it's it, a cultural it's, it's online weird analysis. type of cultural aggrievement. Yeah. And, you know, it's the same thing Rod Dreher uh, wrote. Uh, where did I have that piece? Somewhere around here. I don't know. It's, I mean, this is, this is the same cultural aggrievement um, that, uh, you know, that I think, I, I, you know, uh, <laughs> there are, there are, Cohorts of people in this country who the elite have completely disempowered for hundreds of years and um, who have immiserated and impoverished and whatnot. And the idea that Nancy Pelosi and her San Francisco values are out there to humiliate uh, these, you know, flyover state people. I mean, this stuff. I'm sorry. This is like go complain to Hollywood about it, right? You know, go complain uh, to like you know. Do a media critique. I mean, he's that's great. I love you know dunk on uh, elite media types who who can only focus on Trump and see nothing else, and then are are, are obsessive about um, the, the Biden administration and, and laud them. I mean, like I would, I, I think that's completely fair and legitimate, but it, it, it's it's not. You can't make those puzzle pieces fit when you just try to copy and paste and then and apply to the insurrection attempt. And the funny thing is, is like they talk about ID politics, like uh, you know, like th- that's all this is. It's just simply from the other side, right? I mean, it's just like the 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 thing that is driving them is this sort of like this. Um, uh, it is projecting. It's like twice over. It's like projecting onto this cultural humiliation. Is um, and 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 look, I, I you know. Zero sum, right? I mean, like uh, this is. I I agree uh, that there is a sense of 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 loss that some particular white people have because they are no longer centered in our society and our culture in the way that they used to be. And uh, their desire to not have to, you know, pick up the phone and hear press one, you know, press two for English as opposed to one or uh, the idea that, like, you know, I'm watching commercials like I don't see any faces. You know, the the Cialis commercials are all black guys. Uh, And, you know, the um, um, uh, this, you know, like uh, this newfangled stuff, uh, you know, like I I, I, I don't know if I, you know, I've got to run into uh, a trans person and, and, and not be sure what to, you know, uh, what the word cis means. And, you know, like, I, I, I think that is a real thing, but to simply say that, like, you know, to, to, to foster the legitimacy of this as a, um, as, as some type of like political movement, I think is just, it's bizarre. Yeah, I mean, Asida Nuanevu mentioned the key term, which is psychoanalysis. And the problem with both Caitlin Flanagan and what Glenn Greenwald were doing is it is just psychoanalysis. I mean, as far as my perspective, which looks at this more materially and structurally. Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. 